All right, good evening, everyone. Tonight is my August 24th, 2020. It's 6.02 p.m. This is the Town of Halifax Finance Committee meeting. On tonight's agenda are budgets, wage and personnel recommendations, reserve fund transfers, light item transfers, acceptance of minutes, correspondence, public, ugh, public participation calendar, and as may arise. Um, so first up, budgets. Um, as we talked about last week, given the um, update from the state concerning unrestricted uh, general government aid um, and the Chapter 70 funding, we've been able to um, reassess what uh, we were thinking about in terms of the operating budget for FY21. Um, and uh, everyone, uh, Sandy especially, and, and Charlie and everyone uh, worked very hard to update all those figures. So um, thanks to Linda for sending around um, an updated copy of the spreadsheet that we're working off of. Um, so you should see it in your inboxes from this afternoon. This is the last uh, revision that Sandy made, um, including some recommendations um, concerning lines that we had kind of cut back on um, and trying to get everyone back down to the FY20 level that we want to maybe want to go back and reassess or at least have a discussion about. Um, additionally, we have um, the FY21 articles um, that we should we will we'll go back through again, um, given the updated uh, financial information that we have. Um, Charlie and Sydney, has there been anything in the past uh, like week since we talked last that would be different? I don't know of anything, no. Um, I mean, I mean, if we have anything more from the elementary school, we can hear something later tonight. Um, I can't, you know, other than the messages that you've received from a couple of departments during this week, neither Sandy or, not, or myself have forwarded them. To you, I think for instance, I think it was the, I think it was it the fire department maintenance for the vehicles. Yeah, yeah. fire department. Yeah, um, I don't have anything else at this point. Uh -uh. All right. Um, I guess it makes more sense to start with the operating budget before the articles. Um, like I said, unless any, unless. Uh, Sandy or Bill, if you had any updated information from capital planning, if not, that's okay. But if anything jumps out at you um, as we're talking about the articles. That I forgot to check, I'm, I apologize. Okay. No worries. Um, so why don't we start with the operating budget? Yeah. Okay. Um, so first one up is line six, the law account. We recommended an amount of ninety thousand dollars in our in our sort of first round of voting, um, and um, in column H we see is that Sandy is that your recommended about one hundred twenty four five hundred? Yes, I did. Okay. Um, so that we can have a discussion, I would entertain a motion to recommend the um, revised amount of one hundred twenty four thousand five hundred dollars for Line Six Law. Make the motion to recommend. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you. Okay, uh, Charlie and or Sandy. I'm sorry, I'm missing something here. Um, we're looking at line six, the law line. We had originally put it at 90, and now we're considering 124. You have another case. Basically, I think that's what Charlie asked for in the first place, right, Charlie? The 124.5? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking here. If you had asked me two weeks ago, I would have been probably okay with the 90. Unfortunately, we now have another significant lawsuit. Um, may entail, um, we ha we'll have representation through our insurer. So, the costs for defense, at least directly with the insurer, are going to be covered not through the law account. However, I know that it's absurd as it sounds, the lawsuit is so encompassing over this issue of Amanda's estates that yeah. we may we'll probably be using Attorney Mayo and also our current land counsel, Attorney Questel, and then also Attorney Solano, who was the land counsel before. <sighs> I just, you know, I'm trying to balance here between 
not wanting to dive too deep into the amount of state aid that we received um, for any number of different reasons. At the same time, not wanting to be in a situation that I come back to as I've had to the last couple of years in April, May, and June, heck, even earlier than that, um, looking for money. Um, we're going to, I guess, you know, thinking about this and thinking about the labor negotiations, with none of which are settled, and I suspect none of which, there's a very reasonable expectation that, not that none of it's going to get settled in time for town meeting, that um, we'll need more money there. So I would, yeah, I think it's prudent for me to ask for the whole thing. If, the, if, town, if you or town meeting says otherwise, then I know what I'm living with but I would be, I would not be prudent for me not to be asking given what um, we've got facing us between the various lawsuits, the normal legal work and um, the labor negotiations. I mean, my personal feeling is either way we're gonna pay for it out of the law line or we're yeah. paying out of the reserve fund. So That's I'd so rather, true. you know, I'd rather see us you know, I mean, we would hope it would be an overestimation, but if this is like the closest number that we have, I'd rather see, me personally, I'm just speaking as one person, I'd rather see us go with that than to pull a significant amount out of the reserve fund account, like you said, not even necessarily at the end of the year, but, you know, um, at whatever point the law line runs out. That's, that's just me. Um, I don't know what everyone else thinks about the idea of funding the law no, line. I agree. I'm happy to let Linda, um, Linda speak for me too, actually. Yeah, me also. Um, so it seems like we're pretty comfortable with this idea of 124,500. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right, then, uh, given that, um, if there's no other further discussion, um, I'll call for a vote on increasing the amount of 124,500 dollars. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Um, next is line eight town report. We had originally recommended that at five hundred dollars because we were thinking a lot of things would be digitized, um, but we've had some changes to that. So, in order to have a discussion about that, I would entertain a motion to um, revisit line eight town reports um, and uh, to recommend an amount of six thousand seven hundred dollars. I'll make a motion to recommend. Oh, right. okay. Second. Moved and seconded. Okay. Um, I remember we had a quick discussion about this a little while back, but Charlie or Sandy, if you could just maybe refresh us on what the, um, it's to print out uh, some hard copies of some, of some items. This is, I, I felt that this is going to allow us to mail the warrants again. I, I understand that we can put the warrants on the, on Facebook and have them available on the website, but I still do think it's a good idea to mail them out to the houses. Charlie, your input? Yeah, I mean, look, we were trying, we were trying to save money. Um, mm -hmm. The idea was that the, on a per used copy in the sense of, if we only have 150 people at town meeting, the cost of, the warrant, mailing it out, printing it is something like the cost of a hardcover book, which is a ridiculous number. But I, you know, I understand what Sandy's saying, and I know we're going to get. There's, you know, we have a bylaw change proposed for this. I know we're going to get pushback. Um, if, if the again, if the consensus is that, especially now that the state aid number. Is back up to where it is. It's not an argument worth having um, because the amount of money that we would save isn't material. Then leave it. Then follow Sandy's lead. Um, I'll just you know I'll talk to the board of and during the next couple of weeks. Recommend that this be one of the articles we um, pass over. For that matter, get the town meeting that much shor shorter um, and move on. Anyone from the finance committee have any questions or comments about increasing that line for paper copies? I don't have a problem. 
Okay. Um, yeah. here, sorry, did I cut somebody off? Okay. Um, hearing none, all those in favor of uh, line eight town reports in the amount of $1,700, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any uh, opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Uh, line 30, elections. Uh, register. So we originally, um, the amount of $21,980 um, so that we can have a discussion. I would entertain a motion to change our recommendation for line 30 to $31,840. So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you. Um, Charlie and Sandy. So on this line, I actually went back to Barbara Gaynor and asked her um, with all the changes with the mail-in um, the mail-in votes and everything if she was comfortable with the 21 and she said no that she wasn't and she would like to increase it okay so that was the number that she came up with the 31,840 just because of the processing time and um like she had to have someone there for early voting all day today um, so during the weekend too right so she had people working over the weekend so this was the number that she came up with <laughs> there will be two weeks in october this will be it will be one week for the primary two weeks in october um that she'll need to be doing this um i she's under a lot of pressure given the enormity you know it's an enormous task to begin with in a presidential year but yeah, of course. a magnitude different than four years ago. We didn't have early voting. Mm -hmm. We didn't have mail-in voting. Right. You know, we had regular absentee, but just a whole different ball game at this point. Um, and <coughs> you know, I think she, you know, I think it would make. I think she needs the money. I also think it re re leaves a lot of stress on her, knowing it's one less thing she needs to be worrying about. Um, of course, the primary will have already be done by town meeting, but the general won't be. Um, does this also help, um, or is any of this also going to be kind of expansion of mail-in um, ballots? Is this, I mean, I, I know that was something that she couldn't have foreseen because of the changes the state made, though. So. Right, well, I believe some of it is also for postage. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, and the thing is that there's, the po some of this may be covered by the state. Um, some of it might not be in the sense of the postage, the specific expenses that you can point to, but then there's the actual work involved in the people she needs to pay. Uh, uh, registering the ballots, so to speak, in the sense of entering them into the database, not the actual who's voting for who, but for the, um, okay, we mailed a ballot out, we you know, got a request for a ballot, we, it takes work to review the request, send the ballot back out, it comes back in, now we got to process the ballot, um, enter it, because the state, you know, all this information, everything's being barcoded and such, so that all this information is being entered into the state's database, because there's a part of the Secretary of State's website, I can track my ballot, I can know that um, it went out, I can know it came back, um, there's a, just a larger degree of work for the town clerk's office this year. Right. I just found the memo that she sent and she said attached is a new budget for elections. When I submitted the original budget, early voting in person for the primary was not happening and also early voting in person for the general was expanded to 11 days. So there are definitely more expenses for payroll. Data processing increase is due to utilizing the central tabulation so that early absentee ballots can be counted separately. So she did, um, and she did actually uh, increase those two lines, the election worker wages and the data processing. Okay, that makes sense to me. Um, does anyone else have any questions or comments? Well, on? I don't know what happens behind the scenes here, but I mean, a vote is a vote. What, from a labor standpoint, what's the difference? I mean, do they literally like slide in a ballot for the mail-in? I'm just trying oh, to understand no. the, the 
let's say the you have to pay someone to, to register to bring to check the person in and check the person out so person. when you you expand the number of hours that people are allowed to vote it's not just one day for 12 hours it's now or 10 hours it's now spread out over several days, days. And, bill you're right it may be the same number of votes the thing is that we're now open was it seven hours a day for four days this week? We were open four hours and starting Sunday. So instead of seven to eight on election day, well, 13 hours, we're now having to have people here for 28, 32, 36 more hours beyond 13 hours yeah. that we're open. And then there's obviously a little time on either side because at least um, to close up and everything else. And it's not just, that's the in-person voting. The mail-in voting, you know, as I elaborated, there are various steps that you still personally need to do. Um, the physical steps of the actual pieces of paper going in, going out, but also the entering of the data that someone's asked for the mail-in ballot, it's been sent out, it's come back in, it's now you know, been entered into the system. Okay. Okay. So I received five mail-in ballots at the house. I, I didn't. I didn't ask for them. And they just kind of showed up. Where do those come from? Oh, um, I think it was. I think that was a state law that was passed. If you got them and you didn't make a request, I believe I have to go check the literature. But I believe right. But you have to send it in. Right. So what Bill probably got was the request. The the notice that he could request mail-in ballot. Correct. Probably wasn't the actual ballot because you have to actually request that. Correct. Okay. You know which one you got, Bill? Did you get this? You I, they're all upstairs. I don't remember what it looked like. It should say I Hi. want to vote. Hi, it's Barbara. Hi, Barbara. Hi. Bill, you got five Hi. postcards that were sent out by the state. It had nothing to do with the town itself, the state. Vote sent out a postcard to every registered voter as of July 1st. If you do not return that card to me, you do not get a ballot. Okay, so that's not a standard process then. That was set, that was a new legislation that was passed this year that everyone is going to get a card. The same thing will happen <coughs> for the November election. They'll go out again. So you got the postcard from the state. It comes back to the town clerk. We then have to scan it in. Um, prepare an envelope, the ballot package, which is a ballot instructions, two envelopes and the mail out envelope <coughs> for each ballot. And then it has to come back in and has to be scanned in again. I've done about 1,200 of them. Thank you for so the explanation. Far. Thanks. Okay. All right, thanks everyone. Any further questions or comments? <clears throat> um, hearing none, I'll entertain a vote on line 30 um, to, in, to recommend the amount of $31,840. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? Okay. Um, Sandy, just to double check because there's different colors of font, so I just want to make sure because I know we had gone through a couple of times. Uh, line 48, right. that's a current one that we're looking at? Line 48, yes. Yeah. Okay. The police expense. I actually did that because of the past history. Um, we're actually, last year we spent more on, um, and it was one of the ones that we had to do line on. So we spent um, a, about seventy thousand last year. Okay. So with all the um, the programs and different things that they have, the the data, pro, the data information and licenses and different things that they have, 
they did spend 70,000 last year and that was one of the reasons. This was not a request by Chief Chavs, but it was something that I picked up on because it was a line item transfer. Mm -hmm. And that's what, that's what we spent last year. And I believe um, when we had a conversation that they're gonna be undergoing accreditation. So um, some of the computer software updates and things like that are to meet accreditor standards. Um, and that's why they had to be put in this particular year. I mean, they're gonna keep going and being used from here on out, but that it was a bit of an increase in expense due to the accreditation process. Um, so that we, I mean, so we can uh, continue the conversation. Um, I would entertain a motion to uh, recommend uh, line 48 police expense in the amount of $70,000. This is just the vote uh, to open up discussion. So um, I'll entertain a motion for line 48 police expense at $70,000. Yeah, we have a motion. Sorry, it's hard to hear. It's a little garbled. So I apologize. <clears throat> yeah, I made a motion to recommend. Okay. Second. We have a motion, a second. Thanks, folks. Um, so any further questions about that line, line uh, for the police expense line? Okay. Uh, hearing none. All those in favor, line forty-eight, police expense. <laughs> Aye. 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 Sorry. Okay. Um, okay, great. Any opposed or abstentions? All right, line 56, fire station maintenance. I would entertain a motion to recommend the amount of $17,000. Make, make a make that motion. Second. A motion and a second. Um, uh, no, we got an uh, email from the chief that I'm trying to pull up now, but Sandy, do you have the Right, so the email from the chief was on the vehicle maintenance, but the station maintenance, we spent just about 17,000 last year. Um, their electricity alone was 13,000. Um, and then they had some other supplies and equipment that brought it up. So. Um, that was one of the reasons why I brought it up. I think, it, again, I was looking at the lines that we were doing line item transfers or reserve fund transfers from. So that was um, why I chose, I gave that amount for station, fire station maintenance. Any questions? Okay. Supplies and equipment usually in station maintenance? Um, they have some supplies and equipment in station maintenance, yes. Okay. And they also have outside service, but that was minimal. So. Okay. Um, all those in favor of the amount of 17,000 for line 56 fire station maintenance, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Extensions? Line 57, fire vehicle and equipment maintenance, so that we can have a chat about that. I then can motion to recommend the amount of $33,500 for line 57, fire vehicle and equipment maintenance. Take a motion to recommend. Second. Second. Yeah. Seconded. Okay. Um, and this is this was the email that we had gotten from the chief concerning. Right. Increased costs because we no longer have an in-house um, uh, mechanic, so a lot of the uh, vehicle repairs have to be outsourced. Melinda, is that line actually thirty thousand? I think you quoted the figure for the next line down. I very well could have. Um, no, I actually had. Um, it's thirty-three five was oh, what I was recommending. Okay. I wasn't. I actually did not recommend a change on. Line 58, I think that's all right. Anyone have any questions or comments on vehicle equipment maintenance for fire? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, any abstentions? All right. Um, I'm, I'm weary to do the elementary school just because 
I feel like we have less information than Silver Lake, but I, I don't know, Sandy and Charlie, should we just go through and vote them now just so we have a little bit more solid figures? I think we have to vote whatever we've got. So for the Silver Lake budget, um, it's given the Kingston and how Kingston and Plimpton voted it. I, I mean, you've already voted a different number, but there's a little point. So vote the number that we need to vote based on the March but March budget. Mm -hmm. The elementary school one vote, you know, I guess you have to vote the equivalent budget right now because that's all we got now. Having said that, I don't know that that's what you want to do in the sense that that's the number you have before you. Um, and so the elementary school budget, that number was the number that I had come up with. It was their, their, their budget submission. And then I took away, um, I had took away for both the, um, let's see. 2% of the FY20 wage lines, which was 82,095.46, and two thirds of the increase on the transportation line, which was 29,341. And that's how I came up with this figure, the 5,759,574. I did, um, let Christine, the business manager, Christine Healy, the business manager at Silver Lake know that that was the budget that we were, that we were looking at tonight. I let her know that last week. She didn't come and say, oh, you know, no, we have another submission or anything like that. So this is not the budget that they um, submitted, but this was the budget that we had approved before we went down to the FY20 level. So I'm not sure what you want to do on it. And so the major thing Sandy pointing out is salaries and wages. If we're going to, if the finance committee is going to take the position of supporting a budget that includes the general across the board wage increase for the schools, um, I, you know, are you in essence saying, yes, we're going to support one for everybody else too? Because it's going to be very, I mean, I can always tell the unions, and this is public, you know, because it's just a matter of law that the town in the terms of the board selectmen or town meeting for that matter has no rights to vote on the contracts that the school committee that's the elementary school committee has with the unions representing workers there at the elementary school the town only can vote you know, by a finance committee recommendation or some other number the amount of money it wants to provide to the schools then the schools if they've made a commitment to particular wage increase, particular salary and wage levels is going to have to fit that number or fit the contracts within that number. Um, so, you know, and obviously if it's less than if they've made a commitment or made commitments and the town meeting provides not enough money to meet those commitments, they have a choice between laying people off, cutting other parts of the budget, um, or somehow reaching a new contract with the unions, which is fairly unlikely. Um, but at the same time, so even if you do, even if town meeting says, no, we're not gonna support a budget that covers everything the school wants, including the 2% or one and a half or three or whatever the number is, um, I can go to the unions, other unions and say, I. I can't necessarily make the same deal because your contracts are going to be voted at town meeting. So I'm bringing to town meeting a set of agreements between the unions and the board selectmen for the various uh, union contracts. And it's going to be town meeting making that decision. But certainly if you voted a budget that includes sufficient money that the school wanted in addition to whatever contracts were approved, then it does make it difficult for me to go back to the other unions and say, well, the teachers are getting this. And we said yes, in a sense of by voting a number for the school that covers that, mm -hmm. but we're saying to everybody, no. If it's, we didn't say yes, we gave the school only enough money to, in a sense, level fund wages and salaries. Um, and, but the school made a decision with the unions that they were going to sacrifice something else to cover those contract obligations, 
I can say, I can't do the same thing. So I don't know what you want to do, but that's sort of where, depending on how the vote goes, the direction of how we deal with the other union contracts. For that matter, how we deal with the wage and personnel employees too. Um, <clears throat> well, I think, I mean, I think we have to have, uh, like I said, a philosophical discussion about, we have sort of danced around this issue about um, a freeze or about um, considering a, a, an across the board increase. Um, and I mean, I think now we sort of have to have that conversation because it's like Charlie just explained, it's going to wrap into the, um, it's going to be wrapped up into the conversation about the school, but then it's also going to be the basis on which folks have to make arguments moving forward concerning other contracts. Um, so given that we haven't yet uh, made a motion concerning the schools, we can just sort of have a discussion at this point about how folks are feeling about the idea and the plausibility of um, wage increases. And I know, I, I feel like last year, a 1% increase was about 98,000 for the town hall employees. Is that right, Sandy? No, that seems high. Okay. Kelly, what, what's a 1% increase? Well, let's see, for, are we talking, when you say town hall, do you mean um, union and non-union, non-school people? Or do you mean town hall, wage and personnel only, or? Because, um, um, let's see here, excluding, we got the town employees, let me see, yeah. So town employees, the payroll for 19 was $5.4 million. That includes everybody outside the school. So a 2% for everybody, union, non-union, is about $108,000, uh, roughly. I mean, it may be a little bit less than that because um, for various reasons, but that gives you a ballpark number we're talking about. Let's call it 100, something, you know, in that order. I think if I, top of my head, it's roughly half and half. Um, I mean, you had, five, right, excluding the new mixed unit, you had fire, police, highway, um, which, you know, and then, but then you had everybody else. Um, and I think it's roughly half and half. I mean, it's not, it may be one, a little bit lopsided one way or the other, but it's not hugely lopsided. It's not as if the 108 or 100 is 80, 20 or something like that. It might be 65, 35. It's probably more like 60, 40 or something like that. Um, just, you know, for the school, I think the payroll was you know, 4.5 million last year in 2019. So that gives you 90,000 there, just as a rough number um, of what a 2% increase for the school people would be. So does anyone have any uh, thoughts, uh, I guess, a, 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 a high level discussion, I guess, in, in looking at uh, the bigger picture, thoughts about, um, how the finance committee or how you as an individual feel about the idea of, of how we handle wages this year? Well, for me as an individual, just fundamentally, I, I, I think offering nothing would be a non-starter for me. I think, you know, we have inflation starting to rear its ugly head and I think it's unfair to fund the town um, with people's salaries. I think they should get something. Mm -hmm. Well, my only problem is the unemployment rate in Massachusetts is above 16%. I don't want to start giving raises and then we have to lay off people. Exactly. The last thing I want to do is have to, somebody have to lose their job because we decided we had, to, we feel that we have to give a 1% raise across the board. Yeah. Yeah, that would be my preference as well for me personally. I, I would like to see us be able to give whatever we can towards the cost of living quote unquote increase without having to sacrifice or put any department in the position of having to sacrifice personnel to maintain that. So um, I don't know, Charlie and Sandy, if I, I guess what in your minds is plausible in terms of an across the board, in, across the board increase for town employees. Well, it's just what plausible for the now we're coming or we're now in it's possible for 22. We, yeah. I mean it, this is what I wrote you know this is what I've said before is that you know we know our number or 21 numbers we don't know if, if it's sustainable for 22. Right. Um, you know one option 
just spitballing because we've talked, I don't know if we've talked about it here, but we've talked about it elsewhere, was not to do a general wage increase, but to do a stipend or one-time bonus or call it whatever you want. Just a straight out, okay, here, I'm making this up. You know, here's $500, you know, here's 750, here's 250, whatever the number is to everybody. Probably prorate it based on number of hours. Um, but, um, you know, say this is not going to be, we're not revising, for instance, the wage and personnel bylaw for a wage, so it's permanent wage um, change. But we, we do, you know, we have money this year, the year we're in, we can give that out, but we can't make any promises for 22. Do you think that they, I mean, I, I know you don't know, or maybe can't say this, but is that something that you would be able to take to the, into the, con, um, into the unions as well? Like, are, are they allowed to pay out that kind of a stipend? I know you, you just- yeah, well, As long as you agree in a contract, there are, I've seen lots of contracts, not necessarily here so much, but you know, in other places where, um, let's say contract negotiations have taken a while, and I don't mean a month or three months or six months, but two years. And they just say, fine, that first year, here, you're getting $1,000, boom, done. We're not even talking about what the wage rates were for 2018. We're, we'll just deal with 2019 and 2020 or something like that. Um, or it's a sweetener in a sense of we'll give everybody a percent and a half and then we'll tack on 250 for everybody. Um, it's all legal. I mean, not everything's legal, but it's all legal to a large extent if both sides agree to it. Um, I can't tell you more at this point in terms of what the board selectman's proposing unless we're in executive session, um, what the board of selectmen is proposing to the unions or what the unions are coming back with. Um, I can tell you just, you know, in terms of spitballing, I know that that's come up as an idea before, um, but I can't go any farther than that. Um, I guess in my mind that the idea of the stipend or the kind of like adjusted compensation or bonus or however you want to call it, I think would be, even if it's the same amount as the equivalent, or even like the equivalent amount was, you know, a whatever, a 0.4% wage increase, right? Something under 1%. I think that the one-time payout would probably, given the, the way the economy has gone and given, I think, just the optics of it, I think that would be an easier sell to people to explain. Mm -hmm. And that's just me personally. Um, than to say, well, we're going to give a 0.35% wage increase. And I think that we'd have a lot of voters or a lot of residents saying, well, why are you not, not in a crass way, but like, why are you bothering, right? Like, why are you bothering with such a small wage increase um, when that, um, that money could just as easily be used for something else? That just seems like, you know, you're throwing pennies at town employees at that point. Well, whatever you say, they're going to say the same thing. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, bottom line is you've got people that are unemployed, mm -hmm. Or, you know, and they're trying to pay their bills and they're going to sit there and argue, you know, why should these people be getting raises when the economy is tanked and, and you want to increase by tax? You, you, you hear it all over the place. You know, it's like, how am I going to pay my tax bill when I'm not getting a raise from my job? I'm, you know, or my wife lost her job and now we're down to one income. It's going to be a mess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. So then I'm, if, the, if the board wanted to go with finance, they wanted to go that direction basically for, with nothing, that's fine. That's a policy decision. And I'm just asking that it be consistent, that if it's yeah. being done for the non-school people, union or non-union, that it be done at least effectively for the school people in the sense of as well. either you all nor myself nor town meeting have the right to say what the union contracts will be at the school. But we can say to the unions and to the school committee, we are not in support of funding those. If you decide that it's a priority, you're going to sacrifice something else to do that. Yeah, I, I think so. Maybe we should take a vote on this policy for this FY21 because um, that will, as we've been talking about, that's going to help guide other decisions and that's going to just set like a bright line for us if these issues come up again. Um, and we may not all agree and that's really fine, but I think it's helpful to take votes on them and just again to have a clear, um, 
uh, a line in the sand of what we're going to support and not. So it's the same thing with like leaving the $300,000 on the table, right? That's a policy that we've tried to hold uh, fast to um, regardless of the financial situation. So um, I guess in terms of uh, the finance committee's financial policy for FY 2021, uh, we'll start here. Um, I'd entertain a motion that the finance committee adopt a policy of a complete freeze on wages for all town employees for FY 2021. But not a step freeze. Correct. Right. Right, basically it's what I'm calling a contract freeze in that the grades and steps remain where they are. If people are eligible for a step, they're el they get that. If people are eligible for a longevity increase, they get that. Um, but the actual raise, the salary rates and the wage rates not won't grow. Um, so what my thought here is, um, I'll call for this motion. We'll take a we'll take a vote on this. We'll take a vote on the idea of a weight across the board. Wage to be determined and we'll take a vote on the idea of a potential stipend. That way everyone gets a chance to weigh in on each of these and we'll have votes recorded for each of these policies and then we'll sort of see that one it seems to be the most popular. Um, so like I said, I, 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 I'll end up a motion for the Finance Committee to recommend for FY 2021 um, a complete wage freeze for all town employees um, just so we can have the conversation. I'll get this going. I'll make a motion to recommend. Right. Second. second. A motion in a second. Okay, any further discussion or conversation about this idea of a complete wage freeze? Uh, again, the other thing we have to consider too is, is the possibility that we're going to get hit with a massive increase to the school budgets. So keep that in mind. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think it's a good point. All those in favor of the finance committee recommending a complete wage freeze, please, please signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? No. Any abstentions? Okay. Um, the next one we'll take is um, I would entertain a motion for the Finance Committee's FY 2021 policy to recommend um, an as yet undetermined percentage rate of increase for all town employees. Make a motion to recommend. Do we have a second? Just to have the conversation. This is not the vote. This is just to open up the, make the motion so we can take a vote on it. Okay, I'll second. Okay, moved and seconded. Any further comments on this idea of an across the board percent increase? Before I call for the vote. I don't think we should. Won't pass, but go ahead. <laughs> I mean, it, it won't pass the town, but go ahead. Yeah. Well, that, that, I, I want to be able to tell it. I want to be able to say that we took each of these votes, right? Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, okay, all those uh, in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Opposed. Opposed. Uh, all those, uh, any abstentions? Okay. Um, uh, lastly, I did entertain a motion for the Finance Committee to recommend for FY 2021 um, the, uh, the idea of a stipend or adjusted compensation for town employees in an as yet uh, to be determined amount. Make a motion to recommend. Second. Moved and seconded. Um, any further discussion or questions on this one? I'd be more willing to do this, but again, I'd have to see what the school numbers are. Yeah. This is um, conceptual, though, right? This is just conceptual. Fine. We're voting on the idea. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. So the way I'm hearing it so far is that we're open to, uh, on the one side, the idea of a wage freeze, but on the other side, we're, we seem to be, as a committee, open to the idea of a stipend. Um, and maybe that helps Charlie and Sandy in their discussions with the Board of Selectmen um, and the unions moving forward. I'll, I'll, I'll pass this along. Thank you. Um, okay, so I think that's helpful just to have that sorted out um, given the financial picture that, that we have. So going back to the schools on the um, FY21 expenditure sheet, um, 
line 71 elementary school cost um, this uh, 5,759,574 number um, as Sandy was saying that's the most recent one we have um, so we can have a discussion about it. I would entertain a motion for the finance committee on line 71 elementary school costs to recommend the amount of $5,759,574. I'll make the motion to recommend line 71 in the amount of $5,759,574. Second. second. Moved and seconded. Okay, any further questions? Okay, um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Line 75, the Silver Lake assessment. This is essentially the bill that is due to us. Um, th this is the bill, we, like we said, we, that we've gotten. So this amount for line 75 Silver Lake assessment is $4,632,541. I'll make a motion to approve line 75 in the amount of $4,632,541. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Um, line 83A, I guess, uh, highway stormwater management. Um, <clears throat> I didn't oh, up so much on that one. So again, the 142,000 is what we spent this year. There is a chance we won't spend as much next year. Um, because I don't believe the engineering costs, Charlie, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe the engineering costs will be as high. But it's still so new and fairly unknown. Cost, it was the you know, street sweeping that drove that number. Um, I believe, let me look, because I believe Sandy, thankfully. So in that account, we spent 66000 on engineering and consulting no oh, okay so what and then seventy five thousand plus on the um out, outside contractors which was the sweet street sweeping the sewer sewer cleaning and that stuff what i'm looking at is the draft budget for fiscal 21 um total for non there was a labor cost for the town in the sense of uh, but it's built, it's sort of built into um well the total was 161.6. Um, it was, well, the consultant costs were 77,200. The capital costs, meaning materials, supplies, um, et cetera, was 67.2. And then town labor was 17.2. Um, and I think uh, looking at this, so a lot of that 17.2 is built in, and basically, it's basically that. Um, in some many cases, some of these cases, it's highway people having to do additional work. In other cases, it's um, ju it's um, just part and parcel of what people like myself or Bob Valeri, who's a board of health agent, would be doing. Um, I certainly wouldn't go below 144.4 for this. So that changes that number from 142 to 144.4. Yeah. But um, the only thing, I, the only caveat on that, I need, I mean, I, what I, sorry, what I need to do is check more with Steve Hayward um, and make sure that he, is that so much a separate line item for him? It's asking that the hours that highway workers would be doing work. So for instance, there's a line, prepare and distribute public education messages. That's myself or Bob Valeri's. It's going to be done as part of our salaries. Um, it's uh, it, it, sort of an in-kind cost. Um, whereas um, sanitary sewer overflow inventory, well, let's see, let's pick something else. Dry sampling, for instance, of outfalls, meaning you go out there when it's not raining, you make sure you check the drainage systems. Do you see any water there and it's not been raining? Then you got a problem, um, and that's going to be done by highway people. And what I need to do is check with Steve to make sure that he's built that into the highway budget, or if he hasn't, that I need to build it into the stormwater budget. We can pause on that one, I guess. Please do that. Okay. Um. 
line 85 street lights this um this line we did end up doing line item transfers for twice two of them and um that figure is based on what we spent last year, the 32,500. And let me look, the rate we're changing vendors next month in terms of the supply. And so our rate's gonna change. So if you give me a minute here, I'll make sure whatever fraction, uh, what we've got here. Okay, current rate, actually should be going down. We're at 10.876, we're going down to 10.716. So whatever number city is giving you should be sufficient as long as you don't add more traffic lights. I mean traffic lights, sorry, more street lights. Um, then I would entertain a motion online. Uh, where'd it go? Um, I'd entertain a motion. <clears throat> the finance committee to recommend the amount of $32,500. Make a motion. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, sorry. Uh, the 32.5 is the highest number in the past, this would be six years, right? Right. Did we put more lights on, I mean, do we have more street lights come online or what would, and you mentioned a line item transfer? You know that we um, usually about one or two per year based on town meeting votes. Um, I can go back and look yeah. at power usage, which would should be reflective of the number of lights we have. If you look back to FY18, we did spend 29,731, so it was on its way up then. I don't know how we got away with less on FY19, but, um, and I'm not, sh yeah. The only other thing I can- but At FY20, we spent $32,000, $32.50. The rate I'm quoting is a supply rate. If the state has changed, so we got, we have a supplier, which is not national grid. We've got national grid, which is the transmission. Um, probably what I would do in this case, but I'll write myself a note to look at the rates for national grid during the last few years and see if those have gone up, if in the sense of the transmission rates. If that's the case, in essence, the supply number should have stayed the same short of having additional lights. Um, if the national grid rates for transmission have gone up, then that's the cause for the increase in the street lights. It's not because we're putting in more street lights for the most part. It's simply that National Grid is charging more for the transmission and it's reflected in the total bill. You don't know what that is? You have to look it up? <laughs> yeah, I've got to look it up. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm i going to need to talk to Steve, get or talk to Sandy tomorrow. We can pull some bills from a couple of years ago. The rate, you know, all the breakdown of the rates are there in the individual bills. And we can pull out the most you know, current bill, look at the rates from let's say 2018 or something and see what they've changed. And just because of my, the, the rates, you mentioned the, the rate per kilowatt or something like that. Is that an annual number? Once you get the number, it's fixed for the rate for the whole year? Or does well, it fluctuate based on peak usage? I, I don't know. I, for the supply number, what rate we're paying is actually for three years. We have a three year contract with our supplier. This is both for the street lights and for places like town hall and the fire department. Um, it's a state regulated rate. I'd have to get more information as to how often it changes. I mean, it's not every month and I don't think it's every six months, but I also don't know that it, whether it's every year or not. And that's something I'd have to follow up on too. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Any other questions? Okay. Um, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 
Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Or abstain? I'll, I'll abstain. What was that? I'll abstain. Okay. We have uh, a, a no, uh, no no's. Okay, so we've got uh, four yes and one ascension. Okay. Um, all right, looks like next up is uh, 152 group insurance town chair. Um, so we can have a discussion and entertain a motion on line 152 group insurance town chair for the finance committee to recommend the amount of $1,100,908. Make a motion to recommend. Oh, so, okay, so I did ask um, Linda in her with her other hat on as assistant treasurer to look at the um, group insurance with the current enrollment to price it out. We've had a couple of new people um, who have taken insurance. And so we knew it was, was up a little. To price it up out with one family extra, one family rate extra, and this is the figure that she came up with. So it's a, a fairly, I think it's a good figure. Oh. I'd rather be high. I'd rather not have to come, go back to do line item transfers or, or reserve fund transfers for it. Okay, um, I would entertain a motion for the Finance Committee to recommend on line 152 the amount of $1,100,908. We'll still have a vote after this. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Okay, any further questions? Sandy, just um, explain the reason for the change. But does anyone have any questions or comments? Mm -hmm. um, just to let you know, um, when I um, filled out my ethics thing at work, they asked me not to. They gave me the okay to continue in the finance committee, but they asked me not to vote on any insurance related things. So okay. for 152 and 154, I have to abstain. Okay, that makes sense. Um, any other questions or comments? Hearing none, I'd entertain, uh, I'll call for the vote on line 152, group insurance town share in the amount of one million one hundred thousand nine hundred eight dollars All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All the no's. And abstentions. Uh, that'd be me. Um, line one fifty four insurance. I'd entertain a motion for the finance committee to recommend recommend the amount of two hundred eighty one thousand dollars. Make a motion to recommend. Okay. Hmm. Shall I different number? Sorry, I wasn't. We have a motion. Do we have a second on this one as well? Linda, did you record a second on the motion? Sorry I, do not, I do not have a second on the motion, and Fred can't do the second, I believe. So. Oh, second. Thank you. Um, all right, so uh, questions or comments on uh, this one, line 154 insurance? Charlie, do you want to tell him why we, this was what he had originally asked for, I believe? So there were two areas of concern. Um, first, that the school building right now is undervalued in that tornado comes in. I mean, who knows, you know, I would hope we get FEMA money, but let's assume there's no outside money outside the insurance. Um, we need to bump up the premium that we have right now doesn't cover the full replacement cost of what I would consider the elementary school. Um, obviously, the number could vary a great deal, relatively speaking, but um, I, I suspect it might be something on the order of $50 million if we just, if the whole thing disappeared today and we had to replace it. Um, the second area is the fire and police equivalent of the workers' comp. Um, policy. But they have his injury on duty under a separate state law. So the town has a specific policy for medical expenses and for wage covering wages for police and fire. We haven't changed the, the levels of coverage for that 
might even be, more, it's certainly more than 15 years, it might be 20 years. And what's happened obviously is wage rates have gone up during that time. So that, and I'm making this up, let's say someone earns, this is not including overtime, $1,750 per week on average. We only have coverage for $1,250 or something like that. We're going, if we had a claim and someone was out for several weeks, insurance would cover the $1,250, but we, the town would have to cover the remaining money between the $1,250 and the $1,750. The idea is <clears throat> that the policy should cover the full amount. And that would be additional premiums. I think I have to pull out emails from um, what I know I wrote several months ago, <coughs> sorry, about the costs, um, the additional money that would be needed for increasing the coverage on both of those policies. Um, if you want, I'll try and pull them out as we're talking, but that's the reason for the request for the increase. Thank you, Charlie and Sandy. Um, anyone have any questions or comments on this one? No. Okay. Um, then uh, all those in favor on line 154 insurance in the amount of 281,000, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed and abstentions? Aye. All right, thank you folks. So that takes care of the operating budget. Um, if we're all still uh, hanging in there, can we hop on over to the articles for FY21? Now, Sandy, I, I apologize because I'm sure you told me this beforehand, but the shortage in the article, or the potential shortage in the articles that you have recorded here, is that was that presuming that we made all of the changes on the operating budget? Um, yes, so you know that we don't fund the articles yeah. we fund the articles with free cash yeah. right. and with the meals tax yeah. amount that came in um which was only seventy five thousand we only using seventy five thousand for that number um we the so the budget's over here mm -hmm. and we're taking the articles from a separate pocket um, and that's the that's where we're lost. But I believe that I missed a meeting, and some of these votes and discussions may have happened on some of the articles. I try to make sure that there's enough money to cover everything that's being proposed. Yeah. Um, everything that's going to be on town meeting floor, because if it gets voted, we have to come up with money for it. So there are still some things now. I had taken out um, the two articles that Steve was going to bond. Yeah. But we still have um, articles in here that may have, you may have already discussed about taking out. So um, that's why I would feel better if we could go through it. Okay. And I'll run my numbers. Right now I'm showing about 30,000 in the hole. Yeah. But we also have some that. I do not have any um, dollar figures in. Okay. So I, I think I was thinking more along the lines of um, when I said the raise an appropriate like line uh, to the school middle, re the, the middle school resource officer, we voted to, we do not recommend, the finance committee does not recommend, but like, like you, right. we, resource, we plug it in. I did put that way. under raise an appropriate. Yes. Right. And, but we also like, so I guess my inarticulate question is, is that, factored in as like are we assuming that the town will vote to fund that and that is uh, they have been funded before. Uh, i do have that in so if you looked at the synopsis page yeah of that budget um that linda sent you yeah um i'm showing that leaving three hundred um thousand on the table yeah, we would still have an excess of four hundred fifty thousand eight seventeen. Right. Then I took three thousand out for solar field tax and thirty six thousand out okay. in case the middle school resource officer went through, leaving okay. four hundred eleven thousand. And then two ninety two eighty, mm -hmm. um, two hundred ninety two thousand eighty dollars was the total of the suggestions that I had made to bring back up. So okay. we were still leaving in an additional 119 on the table. So in FY, so that helps a lot. I, I think my confusion is on the FY21 article, 
when you have that we're we're in the hole by about thirty thousand, does that right. presume that we fund the middle school resource officer in that column, or is that not presuming that we fund the resource officer? No, it's it's not funding the resource officer out of um, the free cash. Okay. So you you can see I have um, I have two columns and. You see the Silver Lake Middle School Resource Officer. There's $36,000 and then next to it, I put 36,000 raise and appropriate. So I total up any other funds and subtract that out of the, um, the total of the articles. Okay, so correct. that, and I'm just looking at what's left. Yeah, sorry, that's my fault. I was reading those, I, I was reading yep. those columns as two different uh, like funding sources and that's why I was oh, yeah. Them. Sense. So that's perfect. Thank you. Um, all right. So we've got, we obviously can't make any recommendations on any of the contracts at this point. Um, we voted to not rec. I'm looking at the, just going down the, the line. Um, we don't have anything mm -hmm. after 90 yet. Um, for the road maintenance line, we did recommend, we did not recommend the new backhoe. Um, we did recommend the COA copier. We recommended the fire engine, the police cruisers, uh, the radios. We did not recommend the 2016 motorcycle um, for the police. We recommended the bullet resistant vests. Um, the housing authority reimbursement, I don't remember us taking a vote on that one. Um, we held on that for more information from Charlie. I, I have not spent any time on that. Okay. Um, I don't have an answer. I don't have a good answer. I don't have a bad answer. I would, I, I'll try and see what I can do during the next two and a half weeks. Um, it's, I don't know that I'm going to have an answer. Okay. Um, we voted to recommend the assessor's triennial. We do not recommend the middle school resource officer. We didn't recommend the truck inspector. We recommended the grading. Um, um, crosswalk control devices, I don't remember. Melinda? The grading, is that an accurate figure, the 11,000? So that's what I'm trying to, uh, just say, Melinda, you it's on that sheet of 20,000 that you recommended the unpaved roads for grading, but yeah. on um, May 11th, you guys actually switched that figure to 11,000 because Charlie said that would be approximately what you would need based on what Steve said to do with second grading. So I think that 20,000 should be down at 11,000 based on your vote. I have it on mine as 11. I don't know. <laughs> The okay. sheet that Linda, the sheet that you sent out today had changed it to eleven because okay. I listened to you. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I thought you wanted an official from them. <laughs> that helps. <laughs> yeah, eleven thousand. Um, so line twenty nine, the crosswalk control devices in the amount of thirty thousand. I don't remember us talking about this at all. So so that we can have a conversation, I'd entertain a motion for the finance committee to recommend crosswalk control device funding in the amount of thirty thousand dollars. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, thank you. Um, did I, I don't remember seeing the, uh, anything about this, but I'm sure we, we did, Charlie or Sandy. Do you have, uh, was this a petition article? This did not actually come in front of the capital planning. It was something that was talked about later, and I believe it was going to be on the special town meeting warrant. But I'm sorry, Sandy. The crosswalk control devices, Charlie, for yeah. thirty thousand. Um, that was yeah. I mean, that was from the um, traffic safety committee. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's a. I, I believe it's a real number. I can check with Steve again. Um, but we originally were talking about doing you know one at a time or something like that. <laughs> the committee put it back. Steve and said, no, we'd like to get all of them done. And so it's not on the special. I know that it's not on the um, new special either. Right. I think it was originally going to be on the special. They were hoping to get it done last year. Mm -hmm. But then we changed it to, to the town meeting uh, before the warrant went out, I believe. Yeah. Ramon, where are these crosswalk control devices? Yeah. Just, at the, just at the lights in the center. Um, no, for instance, I think um, as they, I think they were being put at where we don't have anything, in the sense of, as an example, the one here at the corner of Hemlock and Plymouth, 
across this, you know, that goes from the school side to the town side of Plymouth Street. It has, they were devices similar to the ones that were put in at the post office. So these are non-signaled crosswalks right now. Okay. Um, what would be another one? Indian Path Road, um, where across okay. where the Bell Church was. Down Route 36 on 106, Route 36 and 106, is that one? That I don't know. I'd have to go back to Steve to get the list. Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's any, there's no light on that there's one. There's no light. Yeah. Does anyone have any questions? Do we want to get more information from the um, before we take a vote, or are we comfortable with at least moving forward for now with this figure? I'd like to get more info. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to leave myself a note for tomorrow. Um, okay. I believe Steve's out this week on vacation, but um, I'll, I'm saying I'll send a note to him in the traffic committee and see what I can get back. Okay, thank you. Um, we, uh, we won't have anything for stabilization because um, <coughs> that will come at the end, depending on what's left. Um, the vapor barrier, um, insulation slash vapor barrier, an old section of town barn. Um, I know that was like the second item uh, on the priority <coughs> list. Um, in terms of what what the buildings uh, building folks would like to fix um, so that we can have a conversation i would entertain a motion for the finance committee to recommend the amount of thirteen thousand dollars for line 35 on the articles insulation vapor barrier and old section of town barn Make a motion recommend. second Moved and second um i don't know what anyone thinks i think last uh, our last meeting we had talked about this idea of funding what we can fund now <laughs> financial picture is so uncertain for FY22. And I think for me personally, this is one of those things that I'd rather, if we have the money now for this capital project, I personally would rather fund it now while I know that we have the money to cover right. it. We, who knows what next year will be and that I remember, and someone correct me if I'm uh, mischaracterizing it, that like this and the, um, the new doors were sort of neck and neck for which if they had to pick one and they ended up picking the overhead doors, but that the vapor barrier was a pretty close second. So um, that's sort that's of- close. Scott said the vapor barrier has to be done before the doors. Yes. Because okay. what's happening is the insulation is falling down into the mechanisms of the right, doors. So the doors he wouldn't right. do the doors until the vapor barrier was up. He would yeah. rather do the vapor barrier and then do the doors after, but yeah. um, he couldn't do, do the doors without doing the vapor barrier. Okay. That makes sense. Um, does anyone have any other questions on that one? Okay. Um, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Um, can, can we back up to the revision of the zoning bylaw? I yeah. wasn't sure uh, if you had taken a vote on that one. Linda had said that she believed you had voted to recommend it. It's $65,000. Yeah. Are we still going ahead with that? Yeah, they need to be done, don't they? Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, think, I think the vote that we took originally, be, because this gets us through like, a, I forget the exact wording, but I know we have an email that this gets us up through like, like the first phase or two of the revision process. Mm -hmm. that does, it wouldn't complete it, but then it would up in the, the direction of, of recodification. Um, okay. Yeah, we did vote to approve if, if I mean, all right, I just wanted to make sure, right? I wasn't there for that vote, so. But um, if any of the members, if and does if there's any appetite to have a discussion about this one again or reconsider, now you, you can always call um, for a motion for us to reconsider and that's completely well within your right. I think as for right now, Sandy, we'll have a modification. Okay. Um, um, and then I know you have a, do we still have any firm number yet on Pope's Tavern uh, roof? No, we're, no. Um, we're in the process of bidding. Site visit is tomorrow. Bids will be due September 3rd. Okay. 
Um, and the other item you have here, a note, um, is the unemployment fund. Um, and we, the board voted, selectmen voted last week to hold a second special town meeting um, on September 12th. It's going to be a rush job, but we'll, uh, we'll get the logistics set up. But putting money in the unemployment line is one of the things that they wanted to put on that warrant. Okay. Um, I so believe we're talking so either twenty-five or thirty thousand for that. Linda, do you remember what we were talking? What we were looking at? I think we said thirty thousand. Yep. But that that would be on the the uh, the special, not for yeah, no. It would be on the special, but we still have to have a a funding source for it. Right. So even though at this point we've closed out all our our, all our accounts. We can't take it from one of our FY19, uh, FY20 accounts. So we need a funding source. Okay. At least I don't believe we can. Can we, Charlie? From the 2020 accounts? Yes. No. So remember, if we had a special town meeting in May, no. we would have been able to take money from one of the 2020 accounts I don't that had an so. access. I don't remember it. anything in the advisories from. Yeah. I have, I feel that we can't. So, okay. but that's one of the reasons I want to consider. We need to consider where is that money coming from. I, I, yeah. Um, do we have? I, I guess Andy, do, uh, are you thinking free cash or are you thinking stabilization? Uh, for the unemployment, I was hoping free cash, but again, like I said, we're running out. Yeah. So, um, one good news on the. Hemlock Lane landfill repair. Mm -hmm. They were looking at it at um, that repair. The quote for seventy one thousand eight hundred is a legitimate quote from a um, someone who would do the work. But they felt that the highway department could do part of the work, and mm -hmm. they were they were reaching out. I believe Charlie didn't they go out with another bid? Um. All I know is Steve was talking to Alan Diaz from the Board of Health. He thought, I think they were talking about doing it with highway labor, but buying the materials. I have not gotten any uh -huh. from either of them. Um, I know I had asked about it several weeks ago, and I have no more information than I did um, several weeks ago. So let me follow up. So do we do we know what the repair, what needs to be repaired? Yeah, I, mean, I, can, I can send you the initial, well, the, I believe you all had received it, but I'll send it out again, the um, detailed cost estimate from our engineering firm as exactly what needs to occur. So what's happened is the edges of the landfill have been eroding, and that's what needs to be um, repaired, is the, the erosion on the edges of the landfill that has to be built up and erosion barrier. Okay, I found it. Thank you. Okay. It's back in May. Yeah, back in the ancient mm -hmm. days. Simpler time. Yeah. Okay. Um okay. Um so in terms of the article, Sandy, what else do you need from us tonight to help or, or to flesh anything else out? I think basically um, we're going to have to talk to some of the department heads on pulling the articles that you're not recommending. Yeah. So like the backhoe I still have up here. We need to make sure that Steve will pass over that article so that it doesn't get voted where we don't have money for it. Because okay. I still have that one on there. Um, the Holly Davidson, we'll have to talk to Chief Shabs about passing over that article. Yeah, I, I, he, I remember in the discussion, he was fine because they have the lease and they've, they've gotten grants to fund the lease. Right. Um, and I, I, I remember that conversation, but yeah. But we can right. pull everybody in who's got an article. Um, the, right, the truck inspector for the 20,000, I think we don't, I mean, that was a petition article. I don't believe that the man is going to pursue it after the discussion in at this meeting I, so hopefully that one will just be passed over um i'm just looking we still need so 
an e-permitting system. Have we got any information on that at all, Charlie? No, I've not. As with a lot of other things, I've had absolutely no time to do it right. now. I have to check the IT bond bill. That the, um, I know the legislature's version that went up to the governor included money for this. So, okay. um, but I don't know if the governor signed the bill or not. And let me check. Same thing for the um, records retention or you know document retrieval the one. Document management um, system. Same thing for the payroll. Mm -hmm. The electronic payroll, basically what we're working on is uh, um, an electronic signature. We have um, timesheet forms. We have um, the payroll forms that we can make all Excel that they can fill and we can protect them and everything. Um, it's just working on a program that we can use the electronic signature. So hopefully we'll have something on that soon. And hopefully it won't be that much more money. And then we have an article in here for COVID-19 expenses. I don't expect we'll be following through with anything on that, Charlie. I agree. All right. I mean, you know what I mean? There are some expenses that we think are COVID related that are not may not pass for Flint County. The um, expansion of the drop-off area over the elementary school that they're doing. Um, when I talked to Tom O'Brien, the treasurer over in Plymouth County, they, he was skeptical that that would be an allowable expense. I have told the, fire chief, the two chiefs um, that this is going to be questionable. In essence, if we go ahead with this and spend money that um, uh, can't be found elsewhere, that it's going to be on us. I think their intention is to finish that work, though. So I mean, we'll feel it's COVID related. It's simply a matter of nobody else will, but we're going to fund it anyway. So you know how much more work there is for yet to do? No, I do not know. I'll find out. Because I think the big thing was they thought they could do everything else besides the paving. And when Steve was going to come back, he, they were hoping he would be able, and maybe they came back today, for all I know, um, that he was going to be able to finally convince one of the paving companies to get an estimate. on yeah, my to-do list. Other than that, I think you guys have voted on everything that, um, th there's a couple of holds, but I'll start talking with some of the department heads to make sure that they'll pass over those articles and uh, we'll go from there. Great, thank you. Um, uh, on the agenda, we have next wage and personnel recommendations. We didn't meet last week, so we still haven't presented the remaining recommendations to FinCom. Um, we will do that soon. Uh, we have no reserve fund or line item transfers. Um, meeting minutes. Thank you to Linda for doing those for us. We have the meeting minutes. Um, they were in email um, from this morning. Um, we have the minutes from 817. Um, Monday, August 17, 2020, the members present were Melinda Tarsi, Cheryl Zarela Burke, Bill McAvoy, Fred McGovern, and Jim McClincy. Um, so I'd entertain a motion to, and this is for the general session, I'd entertain a motion to approve the meeting minutes from Monday, August 17, 2020. Make a motion to approve. Second. second. Moved and seconded. Okay, any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, Do we have to vote in the executive session minutes as well? Yeah, at some point, if you approve them, if you're going to discuss them, you need to discuss them in exec. But if all you're doing is approving them, you can do that during yeah. public session. Okay, thank you. Um, so we also have the meeting meeting minutes for the executive session for Monday, August 17, 2020. Members present were Melinda Tarsi, Cheryl Zarella Burke, Bill McAvoy, Fred McGovern, Drew McClincy. Um, so I entertain a motion to uh, approve those meeting minutes. 
Motion. I make a motion to approve. Second. Um, if anyone has a conversation, we'll go into executive session. Um, but if there's no questions or comments, I can call for the vote. Um, all those who approve, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any no's or no's? <clears throat> okay, thank you again, Linda, for doing those for us. Um, correspondence we discussed um, in terms of the, the um, notes from the department heads concerning the budget. Um, public participation, if we have anyone, I don't think we do, but just in case, if anyone want to talk, now's the time. Um, calendar, I believe we're already booked for every Monday um, leading up to town meeting. The one thing I did want to check in with folks about is town meeting is September 12th. It's for nine o'clock. Um, as Charlie talked about last time, we can't meet in person um on the premises that day unless like we're standing out in the parking lot at eight o'clock in the morning yelling at each other um which we could do right we could do that or we could potentially be in the great hall across the street um distanced and masked up so we could either meet at 8 a.m on september 12th that saturday morning or we could do a zoom meeting the day before or like two days before whatever you want um the way we're doing it now just to cover any final recommendations um my, me personally, my my preference would be to do a Zoom meeting. I just think it's easier for everyone. I know, so. Me too. Okay. And like, yeah, I know it'll 100% rain on us that, that morning. Um, <laughs> so uh, between Thursday and Friday afternoon, um, it, it, we could also just do this over email because um, it's still far enough out. Um, if we could just kind of consolidate on a day or time, or if Linda, maybe if you could help us pick a day between that Thursday and Friday and a time that we could just have a one hour post uh, for a FinCon meeting, that would be great. Okay. Thank you. Um, anything under as may arise? Yeah, so Melinda, I'm actually out um, on vacation the week of the 6th. I'll definitely miss the meeting on the 7th, so. Okay. Well, I shouldn't say definitely. If you can't make quorum, text me and I'll see if I can join in. I just don't know where I'm going to be. And okay. I'll try, I'll try to be back for the 12th, the meeting on the 12th. Okay. Um, the seventh, we're not going to meet because it's Labor Day, so we won't have a meeting that Monday night. Um, but yeah, but we'll be in touch about that. We should still be able to have quorum um, for the um, the kind of pre-meeting, and then the worst case scenario, if we can't, um, we could always take votes on the floor at town meeting if we had to. Um, th this might just save us a little bit of like rushed voting on the floor, um, but no worries if folks can't. Um, anything else under as may arise? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I would entertain a motion to adjourn at 7.30 p.m. So moved. Seconded. Ken. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you very much. Take care. Be safe. You too.